Okay, back on it. So last stream, uh, we mentioned uh, about we wanted to get the URL scheme uh, brought through the templates so that we can actually uh, provide correctly schemed uh, resources so that we don't get mixed content warnings and stuff. And as you can see, basically PSGI, they, they uh, give us the PSGI, I believe it's URL scheme. Yeah, so right here, PSGI.URL scheme is what we want, so. Instead of dumping the in, uh, the environment that's passed to us by PSGI, what we need to actually do is set this so that it gets passed through to all of the different pages. And as you can see, it's actually right here already, query scheme, right? So uh, we may just need to actually use that instead of the templates. So let's uh, edit the routes and make sure the index route is actually passing this through. So do we have scheme here? No, we're not actually passing it through. So we need to actually pass through the URL scheme so that we can use it in the templates. All right, so We've got the mid title, the left bar, and the right bar. So these are all themed. Uh, so I probably should actually set the scheme earlier than that even. So it's already actually set inside of the query. So it, it will be just passed directly through. So we might be able to actually just go directly into those things. So let's head into uh, www themes uh, Houston slash uh, templates and we want probably uh, what is it there's two different things here that are uh, having the um, Default uh, content warnings, it's uh, title.png and some rights. Uh, and that's going to be inside of the title.tx. Uh, yes, you can see here. So what we need this to actually be instead is scheme. So Go ahead and load that up now. Make sure that this image still loads. Uh, do we have actually Starmie running? Yeah, we do have that running. All right, so inspect that. We've still got our HTTP, so we're still good on the source. Uh, that's actually for the href. I don't even care about that. So. I need to actually change it here in the source. So let's do that. Okay, cool. So, yep, scheme is there. So we're good to go. So now we need to actually change, uh, what was the, uh, actually let me load this here. So there we go. I was loading the wrong thing. <laughs> so yeah, scheme is good there. Uh, I needed to go to the console. I need to get the uh, thing here in the footer uh, taken care of. So let's yeah. So here it is. It's not a source. Here it is. It needs to be a scheme instead. Okay. That's good. So let's reload the page, make sure that it's still good. Okay. Yeah, looks like it's still loading. Okay, very cool. Okay, so we've got this done. Number 
was the issue. It was uh, number three. Okay, get rid of our mixed content warnings. Oh, actually, that'll be inside of. So what did I actually do here? Um, I don't actually need that. I don't think. Yeah. Because I believe foot bar is inside of... Yeah, foot bar is rendered and it already has the query. So we don't need that. Um, so let's just go ahead and quit out there. So we've got that fixed up. Very good. Now, so what we need to do is we need to head over here to Houston.pm and we need to actually uh, pull our changes. And then we need to go to. All right, so we need to now redeploy everything. Uh, well, we need to exfil everything. Oh, okay. Um, so, Docker exfil. Another. Okay, and now we will do uh, pull deploy again. Um, pseudo that. Okay, uh, it's not a valid repository tag. I don't like that. Okay. Um, okay. I guess that won't work. That's irritating. Valid reference format. Oh, that's <laughs> of course. Okay. Okay, so I need to use the Sinos Dr. Paul. So instead of latest, we want 21.04. And then instead of make depend, we need to do make uh, uh, like Debian Debs. I think that's what it is. What is it? Correct Debian.
Okay, so it should build for Sinless now. I made a fun noise. Yeah, I took my break to uh, walk my dog, and it was pretty wet outside, but it was a break in the rain, so I had to get it done. Is my doggy over there? Yes, doggy is over there. She's cutie pie. Yeah. That's streamer mode, man. <laughs> she's being real cute anyways this docker image is being real cute it's uh getting everything done looks like i'm not seeing anything failing so that's good that's expected It's funny how many things are like it's red and it's failing. It's like no, that's expected. It's fine. It's just what it's just standard error output, you know. Oh yeah, she's still wet. I'm probably gonna have to give her a bath. Oh my goodness, that little doggy. All right. So now it's gonna go in. Yeah, I'm install everything and. Hopefully everything works just fine. Because otherwise we're going to have some downtime, guys. Oh, no. Well, I mean, we're going to have some downtime no matter what, but the idea is that Hopefully, whenever you deploy, you don't have to rebuild the source image every time so that the uh, deploy is actually pretty fast. And I mean, ideally, you'd have failover and all those sorts of things, and it being, um, you know, only one node at a time actually being transitioned to uh, new code, and then you just slowly take them out of the pool. But no, that's not quite how it works. <laughs> Not when you're working on a small scale on little bitty websites. People are not really that concerned about downtime in those sorts of contexts. So, reading the CPN installs, that's good. Thing looks like it's working. I'm tempted to try out the, uh, what is it? Uh, Podman and uh, Builda solution here on CinOS because then I can actually run it as the uh, Houston.pm user on cPanel rather than doing everything as root, basically. But, you know, we'll have to deal with that. So curl is not found. Ah, oh, disaster. Okay. Did I not fix the make file? Uh, oh my gosh, I didn't. Let's add curl then. I don't know that I need wget if he's changed it to curl. Let's get rid of wget and actually do curl instead. That's what's actually failing. Okay. It's interesting. I wonder why that didn't fail on... Um... Oh, yeah, because I actually haven't run the... Uh... I, I ran against the latest instead of 2104, which should be latest, but I don't know. Maybe they're different tags. That's yet another reason to not use the latest tag, I guess. So just like last stream, it was basically like, 
yeah, fixing the issue really wasn't that big a deal. It was more like I'm, I'm getting around deployment headaches. But at least this time I'm playing with my dog. That's a lot more fun. I would bring her up here in my lap and stuff to show you guys off, but she's pretty wet. She needs an undercarriage wash. She was running through a ditch like crazy. Hmm. Her suit. That's a... Uh... Quite a Ubuntu name. Very interesting. Anyways, um, it's going to be interesting getting an acceptance test framework uh, set up for this. Uh, it'll certainly be a good way to uh, dog food the um, playwright module that I've made so far and uh, see how far I can push that with Perl because I'm guessing I don't really have that many callers and, and testers using it at this point. And Lord knows there's some bugs somewhere that I just don't know about. So this is going to be the last stream of the year since it's New Year's Eve now. Wish everybody out there New Year's, Happy New Year's, all that stuff. And uh, I'll probably be back, like I said, late next week uh, with more streams and more uh, content for Troglodyne. So that'll be good stuff. But it's about time for a holiday. Even if it's just a little bit, you know. And it looks like Curl's working. Don't like that it's hanging, but, you know, there's that. It's all very fast, you know. Uh, huh. Really? That is interesting. Make install is failing. Oh my gosh. Oh, disaster. Um, so since I'm actually doing this all in one operation, it's overwritten the makefile.pl with the, uh, one from makefile.pl. So I'm going to need to actually copy it back over for the CineOS one to work. Uh, Docker file. CineOS. So I'm going to have to do add. Uh, slash. It's going to be make file. Uh, dot slash make file. To home TCMS. Overwrite that one made by the make all the PL, and then we should be able to actually get the rest of that done and it should work. Okay, so let's actually do that for the chone. 
And I don't need the expose. I think everything else should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and try this one more time. It's going to do everything again because I had to copy over the Docker files and stuff, which if I really wanted to optimize the space savings and the speed, I would make sure that a lot of that stuff was actually not copied over, which in the um, builda and uh, all that, uh, yeah, we're only copying over the specific stuff we need for the application. Certainly some optimizations that can be done to this Docker image. Which I guess that's going to be my next stream. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, I certainly enjoy doing containerized Docker deploys a lot more than I do uh, VM-based deploys with Puppet because that's how it was for years. It was uh, VMs and Puppet and uh, things like Chef, and that's just not really necessary for you to do anymore. Uh, this is a lot, lot simpler than doing that. And to be entirely frank, it's actually superior in that the way most people ended up doing these sort of configuration management uh, stuff is that it's like a bunch of different puppet rules applied over and over again to where you have one, you know, big old server running several services and it's just not really that well isolated when the microservice approach with um, all these little bitty containers actually works a lot better in that, you know, if my little site here gets hacked, whoop de doo it can get, you know, sick all at once in there. And all I'm doing is extracting a little bit of file data and stuff. And if that's not what the actual hack was caused by, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, we'll redeploy and it, it won't be a problem, uh, especially if it's like there was a CVE, all I have to do is update the base image to a, a patched version of the OS and it's not a problem, you know. And yet again, like I was mentioning, you know, a lot of these are pretty old insights in that, you know, Java, it was the same sort of thing in that if you had something wrong with your library, you just shipped a new jar with the, the better libraries and you didn't worry about it. And, um, you know, the, the exploits that jumped outside of the JVM were very, very rare and few and far between. Uh, so your actual worries with regard to, you know, the application itself uh, causing trouble were pretty low. It was always about um, your boundaries with uh, interaction with the parent file system. And that's, I think, where actually the Docker approach is even superior to the JVM approach. Okay, it looks like we built the image correctly, but we were actually not able to allocate it because we had something already running. So let's do... So we've got something running. Let's go ahead and kill that. Kill before this. Yeah. All right. So now let's do the redeploy, and everything should be cached because it's all the same. It should be fast. Now we should have something actually running. Very good. Okay. So let's go ahead over here to Perlmongers. Just in that PM.org. 
it's loading and we should have got uh, no more mixed content warnings. So what's going on here? It's HTTP. So that is curious. Did I actually get the changes? Slightest just Docker. Yeah, I didn't actually get anything extra. Uh, okay. Okay, so I guess I need to actually push these changes. That I made to actually fix that. Uh, oh, for Houston.pm. Okay, yeah, it should be actually in the theme. So let's. Oh. Okay, so I think I know what's going on here is that the scheme that's being reported is actually HTTP because it's doing, uh, when we're doing mod proxy, uh, it's actually doing a similar thing to S tunnel where it's basically feeding nothing but HTTP traffic to it, which is somewhat problematic. Uh, I would have to take a look a little bit deeper as to, uh, the exact headers that are being used to do this. So I think I have Linux here right now that's actually uh, proxying all this stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go and just hit it directly. Yes, and as you can see, it's not secure. And uh, let's go to HTTPS because it should be self-synced. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't actually set up the uh, HTTPS vhost for that, so I probably need to go do that uh, if I'm going to investigate this a little further. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, sites. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, here's my proxy rule to actually go ahead and do this stuff but I need a virtual host for 443 as well. So let's just copy this entire thing and make it uh, 443. And then, and then I need to probably set up some SSL stuff for virtual host, but uh, I need to do this as root, don't I? Okay, and let me take a look over here on my other Apache hosts. Pop in root. It's Houston up here. I need that. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Conf. Right, let's go down to 443. Let's take a look at one of these. Uh, I believe I need, uh, da, 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 da. There, there's some SSL, yeah, SSL engine on, so this is what I'm actually going to need. I need these rewrite cons, yeah, okay, so I need the uh, mod SSL. I may need to A2E and mod uh, SSL module as well. All right. Let's go over here, back to my uh, local Linus, Linux. Blah, blah. Right. 
Okay. Go ahead and add in my uh, SSL configuration here. Yes, please. Okay, so we've got SSL module, SSL engine. Uh, it's going to be in. Let's put this instead inside of var uh, Apache 2. I think that might be the folder. Okay. Okay, so the SSL certificate file, sh uh, let's go ahead and make that inside of there and call it uh, localhost.key. Localhost.serve. And then, uh, I don't care about that. I don't care about any of that. It still is involved. Okay. Uh, well, of course, because that SSL certificate file doesn't exist right now. So I need to actually go ahead and generate that. It's, I, I never remember the OpenSSL invocation, so I was just look it up. Uh, yeah, that's good. I gotta be rid of this. Okay. 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 Raid and common name is going to be the actual FQDN, which is going to be localhost. And email address is going to be. Go. We've got a CSR made. Ready to blah 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 blah. I need to make the certificate. Actually, I think that's all I need to do. Probably won't. Huh. Okay. What's the problem? Uh, could not reliably determine the service fully qualified domain name. Maybe I've got my virtual host block defined incorrectly. No, that should be fine. Hmm. 
Uh, let me take a look at these other reviewers just because I don't seem to recall actually had to fiddle with yeah 443 actually doesn't have anything for the proxy for HTTP it just has all that done just fine It just needs a server alias probably for localhost, a server name for localhost. Yeah. And yeah, and for 80, here's where we actually, I believe. Well, no, actually what we're doing is we're not even fiddling with that we're making sure that it has an ssl virtual host and then we're doing a rewrite it we're doing an ht access rewrite is what we're doing so that would mean i'd need to create a document so so yeah uh, essentially this approach i'm taking with regard to making a uh new redirect for this vhost that's actually just fine so what I'm trying to figure out is that when I'm doing these proxy redirects, uh, it's probably setting a HTTPX header that tells me the scheme that I actually came in on rather than the uh, HTTP scheme that it looks like it is to the PSGI server because it's all being proxied to the HTTP. Like I said, it's a lot like uh, S-Tunnel. So I just need to figure out why it is that the v host is sort of exploding blah, blah, blah. okay it may be that i just used the wrong invocation and it's choking on the key yeah, that's probably what it is. Okay, so matter okay so uh we've got a new key so we've got both of those now i think that's what it is uh, it's probably CRT. Should we just print that by default? Okay. Um, so let's take a look at the error log. Build to configure encrypted private key. Let's see. I 
people want to write up about rent, huh? So let's see, dot key file needs to be it. Yeah, okay, that's what it is. Okay, so. No start line. That's weird. Looks like a key to me. Um, bad file contents or format. So it probably wants the cert, but I also have to specify the key. That's really what it what it's gotta be. So I may need to combine them. All right, what is it? Once certificate, but I'm going to need the key as part of it as well. So let's make um, Are you kidding me? All right, fine. Now it's working. So there we go. Now we've got our Securita. And yeah, we're still getting the mixed content warning. And that's going to be probably because Starman is not actually here. Uh, Go 
going to be getting the uh, URL schemas HTTP. Let's verify that real quick. So, no. Okay, so let's load the page and check what the environment is actually doing here. So, psgi.url scheme is still HTTP. So, there's the problem. Uh, let's see if we have an HTTPX header that's actually telling me the scheme. Nope. So, I've got ported host, I've got all those other things. Got the refer. That's not really helpful to me. So I'm gonna have to think a little bit harder on how to actually fix this problem. Well, actually, no, I don't. So there is a better way to fix this problem all the time, and it doesn't involve the URL scheme. Okay. I can't believe I didn't think of this first. You can load secure content on non-secure pages and it works just fine. So that's actually the fix to this. So let's uh, So as you can see, I changed these to be the scheme, but I just need to actually hard code it to HTTPS. Space and let's make this HTTPS. All Let's run it. All right, no more mixed content works. Yep, that was the right answer. Okay. All right, fix pushed. All right, very good. So now what I need to do is I need to go into Houston.pm and actually pull the changes and then redeploy. Okay, so we've got all the data taken out, and now we need to do okay, we'll do re redeploy, and everything should theoretically work.
Okay, so it's going to reinstall everything. And that's going to take a minute. So I won't need to run my local host for a little while. So let's go over here. I think I've actually got that fixed. So let's close that issue. Uh, I've got that one fixed, I think. And that should be about it. So I just got to wait for this template to build. Then I think we'll be good. Yeah, I think uh, before very long, I'm probably going to switch from streaming on Twitch uh, to streaming on YouTube because it's pretty clear that uh, Twitch doesn't actually have very much organic growth anymore. Uh, their search algorithm is just not really great, while YouTube's is actually pretty dang great. And it suggests, uh, especially to people you're subscribed to or if you've watched any of their videos before, that uh, any live stream that's coming from them, that's going to come up first in your recommendations on YouTube. So that's, uh, to me, pretty huge versus uh, Twitch's algorithm, which is just, it's clearly not bringing any subscribers. You have to sort of bring your subscribers to Twitch, even though the fact is, I really like Twitch a lot more as a streaming platform than YouTube, but you just can't get over that if you want to actually build an audience, so... I'll probably start streaming on YouTube here. Uh, most of these programming streams probably within a week or so once I get my streaming key, so. All right, we've got it built, it's running. Let's reload the page, load the console. Okay, no more mixed content warnings. Mission accomplished, baby, boom. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for our streaming for this year and our videos for Troglodyne, so. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I will see you next year.